Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to podcast 11.2. We're going to look at, again, a whole hunk of these things, but it will be shorter than 22 minutes. Uh, made you look at how much time is on. So let's hop right into it. Will rock roll down a hill spontaneously? Okay, first of all, the answer is yes. What does spontaneous mean? It means a reaction that will occur without outside help. Okay, so look at this right here. Right now, this guy is keeping the rock from falling. Okay, so if the guy was gone, okay, it will spontaneously roll down the hill. Okay, uh, non-spontaneous means that it will not. Will a rock spontaneously roll up a hill? No. But it will roll down a hill spontaneously, a reaction that will occur without outside help. It doesn't have to be a reaction, honestly, it could be anything. So. All right. Spontaneous does not mean fast. Okay? So, for example, um, sadly, um, driving to work yesterday, I saw someone ran over an opossum. Okay? Now, someone ran over an opossum in January. Someone ran over an opossum this morning. Both are equally spontaneous. But in Indiana, they don't really get rid of roadkill. So the opossum that's run over in January is still there, and it is slowly decaying. Right there, slowly decaying. If it would happen this morning, it is quickly decaying. Why is it decaying quickly? Why is it decaying quickly? Because the temperature is higher. You know, we learned yesterday, if the temperature goes up by 10 degrees, it doubles the rate. But that has nothing to do with spontaneity. Spontaneity does not mean fast. It means it's going to happen. So either way, it's spontaneous, whether it's fast or it's slow. And there is the squirrel that uh, you know the soldiers, the desert soldiers, got down in active duty. Spontaneous requires activation energy. So even though it happens without outside energy, it still needs an activation energy. A log burning will continue to burn. That's a spontaneous reaction. But my pencil doesn't burst into flames, right? So activation energy means spontaneous reactions may need a start. To go back to our energy diagram thing, the start could be just this little, little kick of energy, like a little match. We'll start it, or moving the guy out of the way will make the rock roll downhill. Entropy symbol is delta S. The symbol for entropy is delta S. Delta S is the symbol for entropy. More gases equal more entropy. Okay? This is our basic deal for that whole thing. So more gases equal more entropy. Um, so remember, it's disorder and randomness. And gases are all kinds of crazy shapes. When a solution forms from a solid and a liquid, that equals more entropy. So when a solution forms from a solid and a liquid, so then notice we've got solid, very structured, liquid, moving around a little bit. But a solution forms from a solid and liquid that's more entropy because there's more disorder. More particles equals more entropy. More particles would be a bigger mass. Okay? More disorder. More ways to arrange it. An increase in temperature or volume equals more entropy. Temperature moves faster, so it scrambles more. And more volume is more ways to arrange. And this is something we'll talk about and give better analogies and class when we get there. Nature favors having more entropy, more disorder. We talked about that a little bit last time. Look at the solid the liquid. Very ordered. Right? Order, disorder. Liquid to a vapor, this has lots of disorder. So a li liquid has more entropy. I'm sorry, liquid has more entropy than a solid. A vapor has more entropy than a liquid. A solution has more entropy than solute and solvent. And then if it's a hotter temperature, right? It's a hotter temperature, hotter temperatures have more entropy. Two A plus B yields A two B. Okay? If I have this, which side has more entropy? This side has two gases. This side has one gas. The first thing I look at is gases. So delta S for this first one is negative because less gas. C 
solid and a liquid makes aqueous. Delta S is positive because aqueous is greater disorder than solid and liquid. Hot water and cold water. Delta S is negative because cold is less entropy than hot. Sugar cube turns into ground up sugar. Delta S equals positive because ground up is a bigger mess. Dead squirrel equals smeared squirrel. Delta S is positive because smeared is a bigger mess. Imagine you have to clean up a smeared squirrel. That would be a bigger mess than just one dead one. Let's pick it up. Messier. Put some messier for you French people out there. Increased entropy and decreased enthalpy are favored in nature. Last time we talked about enthalpy being heat, right? So you want to be have more disorder and less heat energy. What is favored higher low energy? Low energy. So delta H. So negative delta H is favored. What is favored? Combed hair or messy hair? What's favored? Messy because more disorder. I'll put that on there again. This is hard to clear. This is a huge Justin Bieber thing in case you didn't know. Delta G is Gibbs free energy. Delta G is spontaneity to us. Okay, spontaneity, remember, is will it happen or not. If delta G is negative, it's spontaneous. If it's positive, if delta G is positive, it's non-spontaneous. If delta G is zero, the reaction is at equilibrium. So it goes both ways at once. The reason why it's called free energy is that's energy free to do work. So if it has a negative free energy, that means there's energy that it would give up to do work. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So this is enthalpy. This is temperature in kelvins. Okay? And then delta S is disorder. So if the enthalpy is negative, remember nature likes that. As long as it done nature likes that. And entropy is positive, that's increasing disorder. Nature likes that. Nature likes that. So if nature likes it, nature likes this, look, it's spontaneous. That means it happens all the time. That's going to be negative. Entropy is positive. Nature hates that. Entropy is negative. Nature hates that. It's never, ever, ever spontaneous. That makes it positive. Okay? Delta H is negative. Nature likes that. Delta S is negative. Doesn't like that. Maybe. So it's only spontaneous at low temperature. And if you have delta G, you have to do the math to actually do that, which we don't do the math with it, but just have to say maybe. It depends. If delta H is positive, nature doesn't like that, but delta S is positive. Nature does like that, then it's maybe. It's only spontaneous at high temperatures. And you do the math to find out whether it's going to be spontaneous or not. If delta G is zero, the system's at equilibrium. That means both reactions are done at the same time, but it looks like the reaction stops. The reaction doesn't stop. Okay, keep going. You can find delta H? Yes. You, you, you can find delta H, not just math. So, you have the heat of a reaction going into water. Remember that was calorimetry. We did that before. Record the mass of the water and temperature change. Do Q equals mc delta T for water and divide by moles of what you're reacting. Example is energy of the candle. So take a look at this. What we're going to do is have a ring stand, the beaker of water on here. And what we're going to do is step one, we go to the equations. Now the first thing we're going to do is get the mass of the water. So this two part right here. Mass H2O. That's on. C is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. That's a that's a uh, constant. Delta T is initial temperature of water. Oops. And that was something that change in temperature, right? So how much does it change? So you can erase that double T there. Precision work right there. Once I do that, that means I can find Q. Yay, I have Q. Do all that stuff to Q. Okay? Then, oops, it's, we're not going to do this for the I need a boo-boo. It's going to be per grams of wax. To do this equation, we have Q already. Q equals from 
calculation. And we want to find the mass of the wax. Then we also need to find the mass unburnt candle. And the mass of the burnt candle. And when I subtract these two, that will tell me how much wax was burned. So then delta H is going to be Q, which I calculated, over grams of candle burnt. So it's going to be the change in grams. In this change. Review. Enthalpy delta H and entropy delta S determine spontaneity delta G. <gasps> wow. Again, heat, disorder, spontaneity. Entropy is disorder and often found by counting gases. A lot can be done to find the energy released or absorbed using Q equals make delta T. And delta H equals Q over grams. Poodles.